to yet another episode of John Works Too Much. If you know the type of episode you'd like to see, press one now. One. Good. Okay. If you'd like to see an episode about silly stuff, press one now. You do. Okay, good. So somewhere... Oh, sorry. First of all, what are we doing today? <laughs> Allow me to elaborate. You see this beautiful bathtub? It maybe has a couple imperfections, and it's about to go to bathtub heaven, along with this tile, and this tile, this tile, this countertop, this sink and faucet, this toilet is gonna go to the little toilet heaven, and we're gonna take this light out, that light out, that medicine cabinet, and then paint in here. So it will be a, a wonderful transformation. Now that we've got business out of the way. Somewhere, there is somebody that probably is watching this video, and you're working in a factory, and I'm sorry, and you're making flathead screws. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to power down your machine. I need you to walk over to the time clock. I need you to pump, pump punch out, or however you do that these days. Uh, it, however they did it back in the days with the abacus or something, so you just punch out with the abacus. And then I'm gonna need you to walk away, far enough away from the building that you're okay, pop a grenade or whatever, throw it at the building, and then blow it up because you're doing a service for the world if you stop making flathead screws. I'm pretty sure that somewhere the devil owns that factory and I can only imagine that they're making black licorice there too. So please stop making flathead screws. It's ridiculous. We have Phillips now. Um, that's, really, that's really all I got. Drew, you wanna talk about anything? No, he does not. Drew's pretty quiet. So uh, we're gonna tear this up and we'll see you soon. Love you, bye. Sitting on the toilet again, are you? Well, I've decided to start a new campaign. Not as me being president, it's, I don't want it. Uh, instead, this campaign is gonna be why I'm not afraid of COVID. So I will start by saying, because I get into messes often and breathe things that other people would not enjoy, I'm not afraid of COVID. So then you guys need to put up videos of why you're not afraid of COVID or pictures or just words. Like, I'm not afraid of COVID because I went to the bathroom at Dream World once, so I'm immune, or whatever your thing is. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk about changing the future. Drew, how would you go about changing the future? Mm -hmm. Change the present. That's right. You would change the present, because if you change the present, then that sets the course for the future. So that's what we learned here today. And uh, what else? We're going to tear this uh, stuff up some more. We've come into things that we, oh, check this out. I made a video a while back about how to take the drain out, <clears throat> but you put this fork thing in the drain and then turn it. As you can see over here, this drain was a little bit stubborn and we put this in there and it was like, no. And so then I tried harder and it was like, still no. I'm like, please drain, work with me here. And it's like, absolutely not. Mm -mm -mm. You can't tell me what to do. You're not the boss of me, you're not my real dad. So I was like, pliers will help. And I got pliers out and went Bop! and it broke cast iron. So I'll have a funeral service later and we'll bury you with your brothers. You've served us well. All right, see you guys soon. So in the words of a wise man, let's just call him Drew Gunner. <clears throat> this tree just doesn't give a crap. This tree is not straight. It will never be made into a two by four. It will live its life out and nobody will ever disturb it. And apparently nobody wants to. Apparently it's just like, Live free, your free range tree. Come closer, Drew. Let's take a look at this thing. You see, you got, it's all knotted up and a tangled, nasty mess, and yet it has a beauty all of its own. We should be more like this tree. I don't want to be straight. Wait a minute. That sounded really bad. <laughs> I do want to be straight. <laughs> I don't want to be, I don't want to be a board. I got nothing. What else are you want to talk about? We're making some progress inside. But you know, sometimes I gotta take a water break. I drink a lot of water. I think everybody knows that. Uh, Drew is trying to get cancer real hard. Mm -hmm. uh, if you knew that you were two packs away from cancer, would you quit? Probably. Probably, but you don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. That's fair, okay. Well, let's go back inside, try to get some cancer, come on. So right now, you may not realize it, but you're probably very grateful that you don't have a smell of foam because Drew and I stink. Not Drew, but definitely me. And if you had a smell of foam or smell of vision, you'd be like, Ugh. Anyway, so as you can clearly see, today we took out the old uh, tub and the old faucet and the old overflow drain kit and everything. 
and all the tile and all the sheetrock. And we took out this um, heater up here and the toilet. We took out all this tile around here and all this sheetrock, the medicine cabinet, the, uh, this had tile on the countertop and we took out the sink and the faucet and all that stuff. We ran a wire for this, um, we're gonna have a heater light and a, whatever, exhaust fan. I call them fart fans. I'm trying to be, <laughs> trying to not be PG-13 here. Uh, anyway, we did all that, and then we put in new drain and overflow, new bathtub, new faucet, new shutoff valves all the way across, new sheet rock. We use green rock because it's water resistant, we're in a bathroom, and then uh, new green rock everywhere, and so we're ready for tile on Monday morning. So, what is our lesson for today? Drew, you got anything? Perfect. As usual, Drew says he's got some good stuff and he's trying to get me pointers. What? Okay. So, he says, and this is a quote from Drew Gunner, that one fresh cookie shared is better than two stale cookies hoarded. What do I mean by that? Maybe you have more of what you need of something and somebody else doesn't have any. And you could hoard all that to yourself and you could be mean uh, and selfish and lonely. And the other person could be in need and lonely and you could watch them or hear me out on this. You share what you got, you gain a friend and you both have a good time. So. That's uh, a quick something that, is that right, Drew, we got that? Okay, good. And then one more thing that I wanna leave you with over this weekend, my weekend is about 19 seconds, but you guys have longer weekends because you're important people and it's September 11th yesterday or whatever, um, is that maybe you just leave all your worries behind. Just like put them on pause for a second, take all your worries and just be like, I'm gonna leave those right over here on this shelf they'll still be there on Monday morning. Don't you worry, you just take that weight off of you and just relax for a whole day and see how that feels. I promise you on Monday, there'll still be worries there. You don't have to worry about your worries, they'll still be there, but take a minute off, just take that weight off of you and just relax and enjoy your life. Who knows how much longer it's gonna be. Love you guys, see you soon, bye. Yep. So, good morning. Um, I hope that you guys had a wonderful Sunday. I know I did, and we'll talk about that in a second. So, um, Kanui's back, and I love him, and I'm happy he's here. He's been studying hard to do disaster um, adjusting. So, <clears throat> then it occurred to me that we probably haven't shown you how to use mastic on when you're laying tile on the wall. So, this stuff right here is called mastic. And it uses a V-notch trowel, like a 16th inch V-notch trowel, rather than a quarter inch square trowel. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it comes in a bucket pre mixed like that, it's about $35 or so for that bucket. And you spread it on the wall, and then these tiles have spacers built into them. So see how this got this little, little kind of nubbin thing right there? So that right there is a spacer that's already built into it, so you don't have to worry too much. And then it just sticks right on the wall, which is pretty nice. Now the downside is, that, um, you know, it's a lot more pieces to lay because, you know, one piece of tile that we're normally doing is significantly larger. But these are six by sixes and they're pretty cool. And you can tell that they go up pretty quick when you're in a, in a good spot. So this is how this stuff is laid. So um, I just want to say that for the first time in a long time, I got some rest yesterday and I feel so much better. I know we've talked about this before that I get nine minutes of sleep a week or whatever. And uh, I feel so much better. But not just because I got sleep yesterday, but also because I went to church and I feel very refreshed. And I just want to say for the record that I love my church and I hope that you love your church too. Um, but basically, let me tell you why I love my church. Okay, we'll get to these cut pieces here in a minute. Um, I love my church because it has a no gossip policy. And I've never heard anybody say, hey, you're not supposed to gossip. But I've never heard anybody have to say, hey, you're not supposed to gossip. Because um, people just don't. And I think that's wonderful. I think that we need to encourage each other and lift each other up rather than tear each other down. And so there's a no gossip policy, which I love. We never pass a plate at our church. Those of us that give are happy to give. We um, see it as a blessing burden uh, to have the opportunity to help out other people and to further the kingdom of God and so there's never any begging for money at all ever 
once a year there's a sermon about tithing but that's it and I think that that's amazing and God meets all of our needs and I think that that's great also we're very mission oriented and let me explain what I mean by that we support we're not a denominational church we support missionaries and Bible translators in 57 different countries right now it may be a little bit more repeat that we support missionaries and Bible translators in 57 countries, right? Not as a denomination, people in our building support people in 57 countries because we strongly believe in missions and we wanna do our part to fulfill the Great Commission. But not only do we do that, we also see our hometown as as much of a mission field as Africa or China or any other place. So we try to find practical ways to show God's love to people um, in just every way possible. And so we have outreach to jails, to prison. We have uh, anything with addiction, celebrate recovery. So if you've got an addiction or something like that, then you can come and, and um, deal with those issues with people that are also dealing with those issues. Not like you're gonna get judged or anything like that. I've never seen anybody um, get judged for being different or bad because we're none of us are perfect. Um, it, we have ministries for young mothers that got pregnant that didn't mean to and that we're going to get an abortion and it's one thing to say um we don't want you to have an abortion and it's another thing to say and we're going to stand with you and help you every step of the way and so we have um people in our church that do that our children's program our youth program our um college program just everything i think is done with excellence but not only that but every time i go i just feel like I'm so glad that I went to church today. I feel refreshed today. I feel like that um, I learned something, that I got closer to God, that I had fellowship with people, and I'm just so grateful. And I hope that you guys have a place that you love like that too because it just makes life so much better. Anyway, so we're gonna get the rest of this tile laid. We're also going to, um, we take a bit of this, but we're gonna do it again. And then we're gonna texture this. It's, this is called crow's foot, so I'll probably show you guys how to do crow's foot. Nobody ever does it, but you might have to match it, so I'll show you later. We're gonna put this sink, um, faucet, countertop, toilet, and whatnot back in, and we're gonna put a, a fan light heater up here. So, pretty exciting. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you, bye. Oh, hey there. So, um, <laughs> what's <laughs> the... Fell over. <laughs> I almost did. Uh, so, I've showed you guys how to do splatter drag texture before, but I don't think I've showed you how to do this crow's foot. So here, let's look at that. So this is called crow's foot, or some people call it panda paw. This was ancient, way back in the 80s, the 1900s. Uh, they used to do this stuff, but sometimes you gotta patch into it, and that's what people want. So today, we're gonna do that. So what you do is you take uh, mud. I'm trying to find a crow's foot. Well, there, okay, so I'm gonna tell you a story about the crow's foot, but here, let's look over here first. So what you do is you get joint compound and mix it up so it's you know kind of watery, and you get a paint roller, and then you just roll this stuff on there. So while we're talking about this, so this day and age, wouldn't that be maybe considered racist? I think that it probably is. I mean, literally everything is considered to be racist. I don't even understand the parameters of racism anymore. I thought it was when people raced each other. So I don't know what in the world I'm talking. You mark, get set, race. Go. <laughs> Look, he's a racist. Um, so, you know those blackbirds, uh, the crows or whatever? I guess they're dying in large numbers. Did you hear about this? And they did research on it. I didn't hear about that. Yeah, they did research on it, and they're getting run over by trucks on the highway. Uh, and so when they go down to eat, they usually have a lookout bird, and he can say, caw, caw, but he can't say, truck. <laughs> so that's why they're dying. True story. I knew that. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I saw it happen. Yeah, it's, and I was like, what an idiot crow. Yeah, but it's a whole flock of them. You know, there's and and you just, just let like, them know it was a truck instead of a car. Yeah, you just say car, even though it doesn't, doesn't mean the same thing. So obviously they, you know, need some help. Please pray for them or whatever. Um, so here's what you do. You, you put this nonsense on here. What is this nonsense called? This is joint compound that's been watered down. It's called so, joint compound, which we call mud in which the Which we business. call mud, yeah, in the biz. Yeah, okay, so then you get that on there. You don't want to go too far. Then you got this thing right here, which is, you know. It's the, crow feathers. It's crow, it's made out of crow, crow feathers. Dyed crow feathers. And you wet it first, and then, check it, you just kind of put that on there. It's really, truly amazing. See how that works? Yay. And it's actually made out of crow's feet, which is 
I'm sad for the crows, but they live a good life. Uh, they're harvested. They donate. Yeah, <laughs> they donate their feet. Because, you know, that makes sense. So. <laughs> they're like, who needs these? I can fly. And then they just fly away. On a lighter note, a bird with no feet sleeps on the wind. That's a Asian proverb that I just made up. I don't think it's actually an Asian proverb at all. <laughs> I mean, unless they have proverb. I think proverb is in the Bible. Like it's an Anglo proverb. Yeah, it's probably more of an Anglo proverb. Um, there's probably some some Asian person right now, like you stupid round-eyed pig. You don't know nothing. We don't say that. I'm like I know. I know. Are I you gonna re -crow, re foot these? Well, yeah, we got to tie into it. So. Oh, okay. I got you. Okay, so there's that. I feel like you guys learned so much on these videos, not just about crow's feet. <laughs> also, you know, when you get older, you get crow's feet around your eyes. And I know that because I'm pretty old. And dog they, have, they have things to remove the crow's feet. What do they have, a Botox or something? And plastic surgery. There you go. But I'm going to Los Angeles. I don't have plastic Ask Angeles. anyone. So I used to do a bunch of work for Allergan, and they're the ones that make Botox. And I thought it was funny, which I'm not. And so they were like, hey, you want to come to this uh, outing with us to Bush Gardens? I'm like, yeah, heck yeah, I'll come to Bush Gardens with you guys because we're doing a show in Tampa. <clears throat> and um, so Botox is made out of botulism, which is like food poisoning, which is basically what makes you want it. And so I'm like, who would have thought that you guys could make $4 billion a year <laughs> with something that came from food poisoning or vomit? Like, have you looked into diarrhea? And they were just like, you're not funny. And they stopped talking to me completely. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Apparently, they did not. <laughs> like, that's our food source, you idiot. You don't crap where you eat. But I did. And there you go, that's how you do it. You just So actually when you were saying gross food, I was first thinking it was the Crow Indian. Close. That's when I said, is this racist or Right. That makes <clears> sense. <throat> I actually knew an Indian one time. Because I thought they want oh. they like this they talk. Oh. And oh. Oh. <laughs> so I once knew an Indian who drank so much tea that he drowned in his own TP. Uh, that's all I've got. So then we gotta clean this stuff oh, out. <laughs> Was that scary? I think that's creepy. Paint, paint might be wet. Uh, so, as you guys can probably tell, it's been about, what do you think, 28 minutes roughly? Sure, we'll call it that. And um, well, I guess the last time you guys saw, we were putting tile on this wall. We have done that. We, oh, then we did the texture. So that's good. And then we went ahead and grouted all this stuff. We put this, it's a light. A heater and an exhaust fan, not a fart fan. Yeah, the tub still needs to be clean. But we do need to clean it. We're gonna we're gonna come back tomorrow. We're gonna put a new floor in here, and then um, we're going to put in the toilet and caulk and touch up a few things, medicine cabinet and light and things like that. Um, but then we paint it, and that's beautiful. We got this sink top in. Uh, no, it's not gonna work right now. Uh, sink top in right there, and we got that sink, and it works, which is great. Yay! Good job. Yay! They did all the hard work. So, I want to talk to you guys. He loves saying that because he really did all the work. But the, the, leaning, the fact is, is he won't let you do any of the work. That's true too. You're leaning on wet paint. And that's what we do. The right. helpers always destroy things and you fix it. You were leaning on wet paint for real though. Okay, you, you missed it. Um, all right, so, <laughs> I want to talk about the fact that mailmen, do you feel bad for mailmen? Mail people, I don't know. Let me explain why. Mills in general? No. People post office? Mills. Yes, post, post office worked. Here's why. They have to drive on the opposite side because mailboxes are on the side of the road. But I think that that's inconvenient for them, and I think they should have to drive on the same side as everybody else, and we should put our mailboxes in the center of the road. Even though it may seem inconvenient for everybody else in the world, it's more convenient for the few, and I think that that is a real good lesson about COVID. That is brilliant. It's not brilliant. It's mean. It's mean, Canoe. Why would you let me say something like that? And go, well, this is going on the internet. It'll never come down. They're going to look at me later and go, this guy. Yeah, well, it's a good thing you're on camera and I'm not. It's a good thing. Yeah. David Canoe, everybody. <laughs> Singer of Evermore. Coming out with new music soon. Um, so, yeah, tomorrow we're going to make this real pretty and we'll do another video or two. And I hope you guys are having a great night. Love you too. All right. Bye. Oh, hey. 
So, we're done. We have completely redone all the tile, put new fixtures, new toilet, new countertops, new floors. We've even got, when the band shows up, we got a towel for John. Canoey? No. Oh, uh, Ringo? Ringo. Uh, the, the other dudes? <laughs> the other guys. Yeah, all, all five Beatles. You'll know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know. So, yes, we're done. We did a, a laminate floor. It's uh, kind of blended in with everything else. Uh, Looks real nice. I'm really liking it. Uh, we're going to let John take over now. I but know nothing. I really enjoyed doing this job. I learned a lot. What'd you learn? I learned that uh, when you're mixing these colors, huh? I I like the darker to go below, if that makes any sense. Oh, it does, yeah. Definitely makes sense. So, so oh, oh, wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. La, la, la. Okay. Okay. Canoe's been on hold for an hour and a half. Been on hold trying to, okay. What are we talking about? Here's where we're, we're Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, um, here's something that I heard when I was 18 years old, and they said, there's always somebody that is looking up to you, there's always somebody that sees you as their hero, there's always somebody that is falling in love with your smile, there's always somebody who wants to emulate your every move and like be just like you, and it's usually not the person that you think. And I was like, yeah, maybe for other people, but definitely not for me. And then I thought about it, I'm like, I've done that to people and not told them that I looked up to them. And so the law of averages says that probably somebody is doing that to me. And so uh, I think that it's important that if we are all being looked up to by somebody, and it might be a child or it might be, you know, somebody that's definitely got it far worse than us, but we need to be the hero that they think that we are and um, be the person that they think that we are so that we can set a good example for them and for the next generation because what we do makes a difference. Anyway, we did really enjoy um, doing this bathroom. It went pretty quick because, you know, we work fast, but the people that we were working for are beautiful people. We love them a lot and we're so happy to get to be a part of this and it really does look a lot better. So I think you guys remember the before pictures and then here's the after and it's pretty exciting. So now we're going to go work on some other stuff. One of those other things is I'm going to go buy a sound mixer because we're going to start working on some music. Me and Lawrence Swink and I'm so excited. He's such a recording some fat tracks. We are going to make some music and I'm really excited about that because I love making music. Um, so look forward to some new videos soon and Canoe is wrapping it up for you. Love you guys. All right, so um, what happens a lot of times is you put in a new faucet, or maybe it's not new, and then you're like, this faucet does not get hot enough. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. So normally there's a handle, and then I've already loosened this, but you put in an Allen wrench into this handle and loosen it, then this comes off, right? Now if you look right here, this is a little dial. See how it's got these um, grooves or whatever? And if you pull it out and then turn it over here, then that makes it hotter. And so this is hotter and that's colder. And it just allows your handle to go farther towards the hot. And then go on, wait for it, wherever the on is. And then you, come on girl. There you go. And then tighten, tighten the screw back up and that's it. So there's a helpful little tip. If your water didn't get hot enough, that's or you could also turn it up at your water heater, but that will probably cost you more money because it'll heat all your water rather than just where you need it. All right, love you guys.